Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Chokor Somling. Thank you for joining us in this little program we are having called Read a Page a Day. And we are reading this book, wonderful, wonderfully curated book, edited book. Um, this is Lam Rimia, Making Life Meaningful Day by Day, teachings on the Lam Rim given by Kyabji Lama Yeshe and Kyabji Lama Zaparin Poche, and edited compiled and edited by Alison Murdoch and Sandra Smith and published by this beautiful publication house, Lama Yeshe Wisdom Archive, Boston. All right, we are on day 37 and the text is structured in a way where we begin with a quote uh, by one of our teachers and then we read text. The text is broken into three paragraphs. And out of each of these paragraphs, a big idea that we need to recall for, you know, our own meditation and contemplation. So there are the three recalls at the end of uh, the day's reading. So let's get started. If you're joining newly to this podcast, welcome. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel and uh, Chukor Sumling. And there under the podcast tab, you can access all the previous readings from this book. All right. Let's get started. <clears throat> Day 37, quote, focusing strongly on the good qualities of the guru naturally overwhelms the wrong conception that sees faults in the guru. End quote, Lama Zopa Rinpoche. Text, there are two techniques we can use to enable us to see the guru as a Buddha. The first is to train our mind to focus on the good qualities of the guru. Lama Sunkhapa suggests that we use ourselves as an example. Even though we have many faults, focusing strongly on even one good quality that we have overwhelms any thoughts of our faults so that we see ourselves as only good. Our faults become invisible. When considering the good qualities of our gurus, we should think of our own personal experiences of the special qualities of the holy body, speech, and mind of each of our gurus and any stories we've heard about them. Think of the particular qualities of that lama that are not common to ordinary people, such as the lama's understanding, loving kindness, humility, patience, or ways of guiding sentient beings. By looking at the Guru's good qualities, we train our mind to see the Guru as a Buddha. Afterwards, we won't find the slightest fault, but only good qualities. At that time, we will see the Guru as a Buddha. All the time, whenever we hear our Guru's name, see their holy body or remember them, we'll have the thought of them as a Buddha, as an enlightened being. When this awareness arises effortlessly and spontaneously from the very depths of our heart, without needing to rely on quotations or reasoning, we have the realization of Guru devotion. All realizations from the perfect human rebirth up to enlightenment will then descend like rain falling. The three recalls for the day are, the first technique for training in devotion is to focus on the good qualities of the Guru. Using our personal experience and stories, we reflect on what is special and uncommon. With practice, awareness of the Guru as a Buddha will arise spontaneously in our heart. That's it for today. I hope you had a good time joining us. I hope you also get some time to listen, contemplate, and meditate on the teachings of the day. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are. Bye-bye from Chokor Sumling.